Uh, welcome back. Hey, real quick, we're talking about Tommy DeVito, yep. uh, the now most celebrated quarterback in uh, the New Jersey, New York area. <laughs> when it comes to it's either Danny Jones and Zach Wilson, it's Timmy Boyle and Tommy DeVito, who threw like nine touchdown passes yeah. yesterday yeah, good. in a win against the uh, Commanders. And as he's coming off the field, he played homage to his uh, ethnicity. And uh, I know uh, Jersey Italian Americans yeah. loved it. Sense of pride going, oh, who wants a for one? Right. <laughs> <laughs> who said I can't have a play? Uh, I'll get the uh, special number nine with the prosciutto. <laughs> Anyhow, everybody of mine that owns an Italian deli in the state of New Jersey, and you might guy. believe, I know about nine or ten guys that own Italian delis. They all have got the DeVito special now. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's the chicken parm sandwich that your mom has to take home uh-huh. because he still lives at home. Yeah. All, the Giants, <laughs> all the Giants fans are like, now you're going to win a game. Like, now right. when we're motivated to lose is when you win a game. Yeah, it's a bad win for the Giants. We'll, we'll explain that, I think, a little bit later on in the show. Yeah. But when you're trying to get the best pick in the draft and a future quarterback, no disrespect to Tommy, who's now proven – He's for sure a backup quarterback in this league, yeah. which is awesome. It's a great story. They didn't do themselves any favors yesterday. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on because Jacoby right now oh, has oh. a little something we like to call first in football. The Broncos are 5-5. Five and five. They've just won four in a row. Are they alive in the playoff? Oh, yeah. Country? They're alive. And look who they beat, by the way. Yeah. Like, you beat the Kansas City Chiefs, Bills. right? You beat the Buffalo Bills before they really became this train wreck firing their offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, you beat the Minnesota Vikings, the hottest team in all of football, going for, I think, six in a row in a yesterday's game. And they've won it with a really good defense all of a sudden. They showed up and remembered how to play. And remember, this is a team that gave up 70 points 70. in a game. Yeah. 70 points in a game back in week three. And it looked like they might not win a game all year. Coach throwing the quarterback under the bus. And yet slowly but surely, you know, and I am not a fan of Sean Payton's as a coach. I think he's a bit overrated when compared to other coaches. Mm. I have to acknowledge he has done, quote, unquote, yeoman's work in getting this team, a bad football team, coming into the season, a bad football team after three weeks yeah. of the season. And now they're sitting there, five and five, and because of the AFC's current structure with so many teams being kind of jumped together, they have a legitimate shot of making a playoff run. Like right now, obviously, you've got to get a bye week into the mix there, which is coming up shortly, but... You know, the Steelers, we know, they're not world beaters. Houston damn near gave away a game yesterday. Oh. The Bills aren't great. The Colts are the Colts. The Bengals don't have a quarterback. The Raiders lost the game. They had 10 chances to win uh, <laughs> on Sunday against the Dolphins. Take the Jets off the, the Chargers <laughs> lost to Green Bay. And enough with my Jets. We know the story yeah. there, right? Yeah. So the Denver Broncos are alive going into Thanksgiving for a playoff spot. Well done, Sean Payton. Absolutely. Moving on to second and football. And now the Lions had a win, but they didn't look great doing it. Is this an encouraging or discouraging win? I, I, well, you want to go first? I'm encouraged. Well, first, go ahead. Uh, well, well, first of all, yeah, you got to be encouraged that we were able to come back and kind of win the game. But nevertheless, the Bears came out and played the best first half they played all season. They came yep. out swinging because they yep. realized – they was going to get beat up. So they said, we're going to get beat up. We were out of throw the first punch. You know, Justin Fields, you know, 10 plays, 75 Bang yards, bang. Overall, man, golf, he, he didn't look good. But I'm always down for a guy that rallies, who's, who collects himself at hat time and say, you know what? If I'm going to be the guy, the guy has to play better. And he did in the Yeah, I half. watched a lot of this game uh, with my kids yesterday. And that's the worst game Jared Goff's played in three years. Yeah. I mean, they, it looked like they were trying to give the ball away. They were trying to give Chicago a win. It's like, if, you know, if I didn't know anybody, I was like, well, they don't want to win this game. Like the <laughs> fix is in. Yeah. And then down 12 in the fourth quarter. Uh, great that Montgomery, former Bear, obviously gets the yeah. game winning touchdown. Uh, and he was all pumped up about it. You know, the Detroit Lions in the last two weeks have done something that really good teams do they win differently. They had to outscore the Chargers last week on the road yep. and put 30 plus on the board and match every Herbert touchdown with one of their own. And they converted a bunch of fourth downs in that game. That's a great way to win. That's not the way they usually win. Then you have yesterday's game where they're obviously prohibitive favorites. You're going up against a bad Bears team. Fields hasn't played in a month. He's back on. You figure maybe he'll be a little rusty. Comes out of the gate on fire. 
and now you're down double digits in the fourth quarter. This would be an embarrassing loss for the Detroit Lions and make people think, ah, maybe you can't trust Detroit, right? Uh, and many things in Detroit you can't trust. The drinking water, the hookers. There's a lot of things that you don't <laughs> trust when it comes to Detroit. But you can trust the Lions. And the Lions are in a spot right now, and I asked Troy, my researcher, to give me this answer, so I've not gotten yet, so I'm going to take the leap of faith that I'm right. Love you, Troy. If Kansas City beats the Eagles tonight, the Detroit Lions are the one seed. Oh. How about that? Oh, wow. If Kansas City beats the Philadelphia Eagles tonight, the Detroit Lions are the one seed going into Thanksgiving Thursday. That's how special this year is for the Detroit Lions and why yesterday's game was such a big deal for them to come from behind and win. Now, I know what you're saying. And there's a play I didn't ask the guys to get because I was tired this morning trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with my Jets. But they'll get it for you later in the show. If you wagered on the Lions, I feel for you. All right? Because you knew full well in the fourth quarter the Detroit Lions were not going to cover the spread, right? And then all of a sudden... After uh, the getting the safety and going up five, Chicago's got the ball. Uh, prior to the safety, pardon me, down, up three, and there's a fumble. And the ball slowly rolling towards the end zone. And Hutchinson's coming to pick it up. Yep. And if he scores this touchdown, not only do the Lions win, you cover the bet. And the big dude, offensive lineman on down. the Bears, <laughs> kicks the ball <laughs> through the end zone. So it's a safety. Yep. So they win by five, and they don't win by uh, more than a touchdown and a half, which is what the spread was. And for those of you that wagered on that, I feel your pain. Don't wager on Lions football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> effing heart attack. Safety. So remember earlier this season, Jerry Goff was setting the record for most pass attempts without an interception? Seems like in the last three weeks he's got nine. Well, listen, I, they're, they're a hell of a story, man. They haven't been 8-2 and two since the 1960s. So let's, let's stay there for a second. And when you look about what they've been able to do thus far, to your point is, yeah, they, do, they win how they win, but I'm always a fan of a team who wins through adversity, right? Yeah. Because most times, you can be front and runners. You can be that good. You like the Eagles were last year. Correct. But when you figure out how to win against a bad team and you kind of collect yourself, that's an indictment of uh, Dan Campbell and all these guys in the locker room. So great job. Yep. Jared Goff had three picks in third in football. C.J. Stroud also had three picks. Do you think Stroud and the Texans take the AFC South? Uh, maybe. That's a cop-out <laughs> answer because you saw the best of the world uh, and the worst of the worlds with him yesterday. Very similar to Goff where you needed Jared Goff to lead the Lions back. He did after like, – really, he played a terrible game. Yeah, C.J. Stroud was kind of the same way. You know, they had a couple chances, I thought, to blow the Cardinals out. And the Cardinals, to their credit with Kyler Murray, answered the bell, answered the bell. And C.J. Stroud made it easier for him, throwing one, two, three interceptions. But again, this is the sign, I think, for them of becoming a good team. I think the Lions are a good team. Mm-hmm. And they've been through this stage of their maturation a year ago, oh, wow. where now they're ready to win and they're 8-2. and two. I think Houston's at the beginning stages of that, where they're learning how to win. They're able to overcome. That's a terrible pass yeah. right there. But the kid just comes out and keeps slinging it. And that's part of you know, why we always debate, is it good for a rookie to play right away or should he sit on the sideline? All these bad passes right now are great for the long-term you know, prospects of what C.J. Stroud's going to be. And winning a game like that against a feisty Cardinal team that came out of the gate hot you know, with Kyler Murray, bang, 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 touchdown, tells you a lot about the makeup of this team. And a sideline also that doesn't panic. You know, D'Amico Ryan was, yeah. sticks to his game plan and doesn't matter what the score is, he doesn't panic. And to your point, great point, because a lot of young quarterbacks, no matter how they do, if you start to see them unravel, especially if you're throwing three picks, then the, 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 the rebuttal is, well, we got to run the ball, right? Take it out of his hands, subdue the offense. We don't, that's not it. They keep letting them go. And for him, C.J. Stroud, he doesn't waver either, right? Yep. So you got a guy who's confident, competent, and he's going to be a hell of a quarterback for the Texans. But I like, when, I like what they got going. Defense plays well, too. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.